Hello and welcome to this Power BI tutorial with me, James from Matador Software, where we're going to be looking at data visualization principles and best practices when building Power BI and, and, and generally reports and dashboards. So before we look at creating something like this, where we've got um, you know, a navigation page and, and a typical dashboard. I just wanted to go over some data visualization principles within um, a slide. So there's obviously many principles, best practices, rules, but I picked out a few of these select um, items and then I want to look at these within the context of a Power BI report that I quickly created for um, a Power BI community um, speech that I gave. So. I guess the first one and the most important is that we need to answer end users questions uh, full stop. So you can be the best in the world at visualization or DAX, but if you can't scope and understand the context and the relevance of, and the issues that we're trying to solve and translate that into a report or dashboard, then your data analysis career is going to be very short lived. We need to choose visuals wisely. Obviously we have a huge range, but sometimes keeping these simple um, and, and knowing which visuals to use when is very powerful. So, you know, sand key visuals, I see these a lot. Um, there's not always a lot of, um, it doesn't provide much of a call to action when they're more complex, you'd need to think about that. If you're using custom visuals as well, um, think about whether these come with a cost if end users can access these, whether they're stable and they're, they're always going to be there or if it's going to lead to more manual process down the line. Use color and size to direct attention to key areas. Well, color is universal. Usually, if you see a red color, you know that that's usually not a good thing. And equally, if the size is large, you know that might be a, a large number or something that you need to take note of. These are incredibly powerful because your audience could be from a variety of different backgrounds, um, but these are universal sort of metrics, so they're gonna be powerful. Keep it simple. I'm sure most people will agree that they, the reports that look simple um, are usually the ones that took the most amount of time because you took that data, you warehoused it, then you cleaned it, then you went to the visualization stage and to make it look simple and powerful um, is the hardest task, but it's the most rewarding and it will get the most interaction from end users and it will likely pass user acceptance testing. Um, provide context, a call to action and interactivity. You can sort of group these together. By context, it needs to be relevant. You can't just build a dashboard if it's not sort of serving a purpose. So maybe the context is that you want to improve your invoicing or you want to improve sales um, or a certain amount of sales is a bad thing because a million dollars in sales might be good to someone, but in, in the next department or company, it's not. So that's important. And we want interactivity in a call to action, meaning if, dependent on the visualizations, you want to give people an option to do something, rectify it, report it. And um, that's where interactivity and in, including icons, buttons, links to other web URLs, whatever that may be, is extremely powerful. So now we're going to go into the, um, the report and quickly look at some of the detail here. So this is based on the, the Northwind database, uh, a well-known Microsoft sample. Um, and it's good because it means you don't have to work with classified data and you can produce something together pretty quickly to have a proof of concept or highlight some points or practice. So first things first, a navigation page is powerful because if you have a, a report with three, four, five, twenty pages, end users who are not very well trained on the specific report may not know what to do or where to look. So you can provide some guidance. We should always look to also give people um, an insight into what the report actually covers. So powerful insights and sales metrics and what it enables people to do. A um, little bit of navigation give them a button with some hover effects, people like that. And then you can have something like a link to a ticketing service so that uh, the report developer yourself and the BI organization can go and make changes and then we can improve by iteration. And we'll look at the invoicing side. So 
we'll look at how we can apply some of those data visualization best practices here. So first of all, simple navigation page, people know how to navigation pane, sorry, people know how to operate these. So very simple, a um, bit of a custom shape to, to indicate to users what, which section they're on. Um, but straight away at the top of the page, we've got some, some interactivity and we're providing context. Because this is concerning invoices, people can click the Teams icon to view PDF invoices and get a bit more detail or depth. We want to provide some layering um, and they can click on another icon to view latest invoicing targets. So that provides the, the context as to why we're actually doing this and presenting these metrics. Again, um, simple shapes uh, provide the foundation for this canvas piece here. Um, but we give a bit of an introduction, what the key invoicing statistics, and we use the color red to highlight people's attention to what these actually are. Because you can just present figures, but if they're not uh, related to something, they're pretty much useful. So we've got decreased freight costs, expand shipments globally, improve sales performance. So you can see again, the color red highlighting potentially not so good things. Our freight costs per percentage by income is 16%. The average load cost is too high. Now, one of our objectives was to decrease that, so then we can um, we can prompt people to do something about that, and so on. Here we've got build income by shipping versus shipping costs. Now you can see the sales fluctuates greatly, but the shipping cost doesn't. That's concerning. So we've chosen the right graph because we've highlighted that, and then we've got again a call to action where. Maybe the supply chain or logistics manager can go and view the latest freight import charges to figure out why this is happening. And as we had decreased freight costs, this is, uh, and obviously improved sales performance, these are the two key metrics that we want to display. We've also got a nice, just DAX formatted piece to show when the data was last refreshed, because that's going to be really important that people see that in plain English when they're working with um, data. And then, yeah, people, it's interactive. We, I grayed out the um, X and Y axis, that's personal choice, but I think we've got enough data here and we don't really need it there. And like I said, make use of space, keep it simple, try not to overload people. And in this pretty simple dashboard, in terms of level of visualization um, and space, we've actually been able to keep it clean. There's a nice theme and people can really dive down into the detail, understand why things are happening, and they've got a call to action so they can go and get some context, depth, and fix issues. So yeah, hopefully you've seen how we can tie together some data visualization principles, make a clean looking Power BI dashboard and report. Um, and as usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you.